What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. Help other people to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores Cannon has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT. Now you can learn her method by going directly to themoreshow.com forward slash QHHT. And don't forget to mention the discount coupon More Talks. My next guest is author Joan Millen. Now, Joan is a professor in the Department of English at Temple University. She's also the author of 17 books. Her latest book, A Farewell to Justice, looks at the evidence of a cover-up months before the assassination of JFK. Joan now joins me from her home in New Jersey. Joan Millen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kevin. Now, Joan, what got you interested in the JFK assassination? What sparked your interest? It just seems incredible. When Mark Lane got on television and on the radio at the time of the Kennedy assassination, and he then rented a church down in Manhattan to discuss the discrepancies between what the government and what the media were saying happened and how impossible it was that it could have happened that way. So that happened. Then in 1969, I went down to New Orleans with my husband because Jim Garrison had invited us. In, you know, we didn't really do it in sex because my husband had sent him copies of the Italian newspaper Paese Sera, which exposed a CIA front called Permindex and Centro Mondiale Commerciale in Rome, which was filled with all sorts of former fascist Nazis and also Clay Shaw was involved. Well, who were some of these key characters? You know, who was Clay Shaw? Who was Jim Garrison? You know, how did this tie up in, in the uh, JFK case? Jim Garrison was district attorney of Orleans Parish, which, which meant New Orleans. And uh, during the weekend of the assassination, his office was told that a, a, a local pilot, a CIA contract pilot named David Ferry, knew Lee Harvey Oswald, who had been named in Dallas as the assassin. So Garrison started, investigated, talked to Ferry, turned Ferry over to the FBI. And then Afterwards, when the Warren report produced nothing, when Ferry wasn't even interviewed by the Warren Commission, Garrison took up the case again. I think he took it up in 1965 when Esquire magazine published an article uh, about the Warren report and how faulty it was. Garrison decided to reinvestigate the case. Clay Shaw was Garrison's suspect because Clay Shaw was seen with Oswald during the summer of 1963 in the state of Louisiana. Well, what was Shaw? the head of the International Trade Mart, a very fancy figure in New Orleans, doing hanging around with this ex-Marine, low-life Lee Harvey Oswald. This is not a match. The same way that in Dallas, George de Morinchel, who is this, this uh, former baron and uh, aristocrat, what is he doing looking after Oswald in Dallas? The same thing. CIA had asked these people to look after Oswald, to control him, to put him where they wanted him put. But then why was Jim Garrison so obsessed with the JFK case? Garrison was a great admirer of President Kennedy. And you know, Gar Kennedy, I don't, if, if you all remember, Kennedy won the 1960 presidential election as a result of a debate that he had with Richard Nixon, his opponent. And Kennedy was handsome and dynamic and articulate and passionate. And Nixon looked like he had a five o'clock shadow and he looked devious. And those debates made a big difference. Well, Garrison, when he ran for 
district attorney also conduct was in a series of debates and he won the office on the strength of debates he identified with kennedy garrison was a democrat kennedy was a democrat kennedy was at least spoke in favor of civil rights garrison really believed in civil rights and was really the only district attorney that they had down there who uh, fought for uh, the rights of african americans and the coroner down there told me when i did the interview frank minyard that when he went into homes of african americans in orleans parish they had three photographs. They had Martin Luther King, they had John F. Kennedy, and they had Jim Garrison. So he was much beloved by the black voters, and always they always overwhelmingly voted for him when he ran for re-election uh, for district attorney. So why, in your opinion, then, was the CIA involved in the JFK assassination? CIA hated President Kennedy. There's, there's a real motive there. Kennedy was trying to undermine CIA, take away their budget, take away the powers of the Director of Central Intelligence. Kennedy was furious about the Bay of Pigs because, after all, it was not something that he just wanted to do and then he didn't give them air cover. They, they attacked him for that. And, and it, of course, it was pointless. And it was also futile because where they, from where they landed uh, on the Zapata Peninsula there, there was no way they could win. So it was a suicide mission. And Kennedy got the blame for it, and he accepted the blame, but he was mad at the agency. He said, I'm going to split the agency in a thousand pieces and toss them to the winds. That's a paraphrase. And those CIA bastards, I'll get them if it's the last thing I do. And that's quoted in Richard Reeves' book, President Kennedy. Well, it turns out they got him first. So are you saying that the CIA assassinated JFK? I am, but I'm not the first. Mark Lane said it, Don DeLillo said it in his novel Libra, based on a lot of documentation published even before the JFK Act. Many people have said it. It's just that CIA has enormous resources to undermine anybody who says such a thing. But there is really no other possible sponsor of the assassination, not the mafia, not, I don't know who else, they, not Fidel Castro, not the Russians. There's really no evidence for anyone having done anything there. Now, we know that the CIA used the mafia in their attempts to murder Fidel Castro, but that's not the same thing. There's nobody that can, and we know that uh, Jack Ruby had mafia connections, you know, Jack Ruby being the assassin of Lee Harvey Oswald, but certainly uh, the mafia had no motive to kill President Kennedy. So you don't believe in the lone gunman theory? I mean, you don't believe it was, you know, Lee Harvey Oswald that took that shot and killed, well, the number of shots and killed President Kennedy? For years, it's at least, I don't know, 80, 90 percent of the American public don't believe that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone in shooting President Kennedy. We have, and I haven't mentioned, the Zapruder film, which is an eight millimeters, everybody knows, film uh, taken by a dress manufacturer on the day of the assassination, which pretty much shows that Kennedy's head was blown off from a shot coming from the front, which meant that the uh, grassy no, up above, in front of the motorcade. There's no chance that Oswald could have killed President Kennedy. But, you know, does all the tie-ups with the American mob, uh, Cuba, and the, the sort of Vietnam War tie into the assassination of JFK? I mean, where does this all fit into it? There wasn't a big war in Vietnam yet. Kennedy had never sent ground troops to Vietnam. There were some special forces there. Certainly there was no public opposition to President Kennedy's involvement in the, Viet in the, in the Vietnam War. Who were the other people that you mentioned just now? The Cubans? Cuban Castro. Kennedy was, was involved in an attempt to make friends with Castro. Of course, that was a double deal because on the one hand, he wanted to stop Castro from uh, aiding Latin American revolutionary movements. But he also had an emissary, William Atwood, down in Havana and elsewhere, trying to figure some kind of deal with Castro. So the idea that Castro would have killed the head of state of the United States is inconceivable. And Kennedy, I, and people were with Castro when, the, when they heard of the Kennedy assassination. It was clear that it was a complete surprise to him. And that's not welcome. Not welcome. How many people, in your opinion, were involved in the assassination of JFK? I never counted. I don't know. Everybody's on a need-to-know basis. Certainly, I, I, have no, I don't really know how many. More than one. Let's put it that way. Certainly Shaw, David Ferry. The people who were shooting in, 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 in the Dealey Plaza, Guy Bannister, the, the Larry Howard, Lawrence Howard, who was in, New, was in Dallas collecting maps of the parade route and all of that from Thomas Edward Beckham, who I interviewed for a Farewell to Justice. And, uh, you know, we can name a big bunch, but I don't know how many. So then do you believe in the, you know, the, the JFK film that came out in the early 90s was a fair representation of Jim Garrison and actual integral to the actual plot of what happened to JFK himself? 
It was certainly true. Jay, the film JFK by Oliver Stone is certainly true to the scene in New Orleans, to the ferment, to the guy Bannister's office, to Jack Martin, to the people that who was one of the handlers of Thomas Edward Beckham and who knew Ferry and who knew Oswald and uh, who was a witness later for the Garrison case. It was true. Now, it's a, as I, it's a fiction film. So uh, Oliver Stone felt he could create composite figures to make it more dramatic. He could add a an omniscient figure, and that was based upon Fletcher Prouty, the uh, Pentagon officer who was liaison between the Pentagon and CIA. He put that scene in Washington D.C. where Kevin Costner meets the, this mysterious figure. That was in, that was invented. But the film itself, in its spirit and in its, uh, I think it, most of its facts is true. It's not a documentary. But it's overwhelmingly true. And Oliver Stone was enormously courageous to have made this film, and he suffered the consequences of it. So let's not forget that. He deserves praise. And not only that, as a result of the film JFK, a year later, Congress passed the JFK Act, where millions of documents, and some of them very damning, where we, I mean, the CIA could not really read all these documents. They just released an enormous amount of material. And you, and, and it's, they're still releasing material. And in fact, one of the, the documents that has been released by the CIA's History Project is a document that's, that states, which is something Garrison could never find evidence for, and that is that Clay Shaw was employed by CIA. Well, I wish I had it from Farewell to Justice. I didn't, but I have it from my next books because I'm going to use it. It's, there it is. Garrison knew it. Shaw got up on the stand at the trial and denied it when his lawyer said, uh, have you ever been associated with CIA? And Shaw said no, and it was a lie. And Garrison tried to charge him with perjury and couldn't do it. But he was he perjured himself. Because the agency, loyalty to the agency comes before loyalty to the United States, telling the truth in a, in a court or anything like that. So very briefly then, I mean, who profited from President Kennedy being killed? Ah, CIA and its clients. CIA increases its power. CIA then oversees the war in Vietnam because after Kennedy died, Lyndon Johnson sent hundreds of thousands of ground troops to Vietnam. And then CIA's client corporations like Halliburton and Bechtel uh, uh, stay in Vietnam for you know a decade and more. And they profit enormously, just the same people that are profiting from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, Somalia, Yemen and all these places. It's Brown and Root that built all those military bases starting after World War II. And CIA, they were CIA assets, Herman and George Brown. And that document proving that they were comes as a result of the Garrison investigation. Because Garrison at one point wondered, what is Lyndon Johnson's relationship to George Brown? He's just figuring it out. And so CIA panics and they release a document which proves that Herman and George Brown and a whole host of executives of Brown and Root were CIA assets of the clandestine services, not the domestic contact service. So why does JFK still matter today? What, why does the story still matter to us? It matters today because the, the Kennedy assassination was a coup that took power, if it ever, if what power it had, from the elected government, from Congress and from the president, and placed it overwhelmingly in the hands of this uh, CIA. And, and, and they really are making foreign policy today and creating a, a, a policy of permanent war. That's what defines the United States in a way that didn't define the United States when I grew up. Jim Garrison used to say, I thought I was living in the country I was born in, meaning he wasn't and meaning we aren't either. Well, Joe Millen, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, you're welcome, Kevin. I enjoyed it.